If you're the kind of pilot who always greases landings when you're flying solo, but then bounces when there's passengers in the airplane, go ahead and click that thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. This video is about the torque roll. It's an air show favorite. So take a look and then we'll get into how it works. I want to thank everybody who enjoyed the video I put out last week about the inverted flat spin. The comments were fantastic, the engagement was great, and I really appreciated the reception of that video. So thank you, and I will keep doing this as long as you keep uh, interacting with me, giving me your comments, and telling me what you want to see. And some of those uh, requests are phenomenal, phenomenal type maneuvers, so I'll get to them all. Let me talk a little bit about the goals of this video series. This is not flight instruction, and I want to be really clear about that. This is just information to improve some public knowledge about airshow flying and some complicated maneuvers. These maneuvers are not even considered basic aerobatics. Most of these are advanced aerobatics, and most pilots who are learning aerobatics will not learn these maneuvers until they progress in their career to a point where they're safe enough to do the basic maneuvers like rolls and loops and hammerheads. So flying if you're a pilot and you know this, is as much about skills and learning new things as it is about harnessing energy, physics, fluid dynamics, engineering, mechanics, thermodynamics, math. Wait, this is starting to sound a lot like science. That's right, it's science. Flying is all about science. There's so much involved here in terms of fluid dynamics. That's how an airplane flies, right? Airflow. Bernoulli's principle, the coanda effect, air being deflected down by the shape of the wing and the wing pushing up, which gets us into Newton's third law of motion, which is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So let's talk about that for a minute because it's really gonna become important in this video about the torque roll. So what exactly is this whole idea of action reaction? Well, let's take a look at the balloon trick. Now, come on, who hasn't done that with a balloon in their own house? The balloon fills up with air, and when you let it go, all that escaping air comes out the little nozzle, which propels the balloon forward. Action, reaction. That's important because when we talk about the torque roll and the fact that the propeller is turning in one direction, it's making the airplane want to turn in another direction. So what does that sound like? Sounds a lot like when you take off and you need a lot of right rudder, not because your instructor is yelling at you to give a lot of right rudder. It's because the plane tends to yaw left. Why does it do that? It does that for several reasons. One is the propellers turning, creating a gyroscopic precession, more science, gyroscopic precession, making the airplane fuselage twist a certain way and causing it to turn left. It's also doing that because of P factor, which is the airplane is turning counterclockwise as you sit in the cockpit and look at the prop. One blade is biting the air and creating thrust. The other one is going backwards and not creating thrust. There's asymmetric thrust, which is more on the right side than the left. It's turning the plane to the left. There's slipstream. The air coming off the prop is actually swirling around the airplane and making it turn to the left. So there's all these factors going on and we compensate with right rudder, that's the bottom line. Well, this really comes into play in the torque roll. By the way, why is it even called a torque roll? Because of engine torque, what drives the maneuver? So when you watch that intro video, as the plane went up and was rolling, it was running out of speed. Well, what makes a plane roll when it's going forward? Well, it's the ailerons, of course, right? Those ailerons moving on the wings. But as it slowed down at the top, there was no airflow. It was near zero airspeed. In fact, it started going backwards. Why was it still rolling? It was rolling from engine torque. The engine makes power. Power is torque, which is a twisting force. Now that acts from the crankshaft onto the propeller, which is turning again. K 
counterclockwise, no clockwise, turning clockwise as you sit in the cockpit, which makes the airplane fuselage want to go the other way. So when you get to the top of that maneuver, which by the way, you have to do the maneuver to the left. Think about it. The airplane fuselage wants to roll left because the plane's going right. You have to roll left. Otherwise, when you get to the top of the maneuver, that engine torque is not going to keep the plane rolling after the ailerons lose their efficiency. So we always roll left when we pull vertical. So as we're rolling left, we get to the top and we've run out of airflow over the wings to work on the ailerons. Engine torque keeps it going as it's going backwards. So think about that. That's the action reaction. The engine is, is turning the prop, which is reacting on the plane turning itself. So they're really turning against each other. And all that force comes from the engine making power, making torque. The aerobatic side, a lot of people ask about that, that star-shaped thing on the wingtip. What's that for? You're going to see in this video very clearly what that's for. When you pull vertical in the airplane, you line yourself up with one of those little pieces of wire on the horizon. And that's how you measure yourself or judge yourself as you're flying up the maneuver by keeping that piece on the horizon as the airplane's rolling around it. So a couple other things before we get into the analysis of the video. Uh, air show planes or aerobatic planes, let's talk about that. These are purpose-built aerobatic planes. These are not like your Cessna. These planes are designed for up to six Gs in the case of the Pitt Special I fly. And some airplanes are certified for up to 10 Gs, like an extra 300. So the plane I fly in this video is a certified Pitts S2B. It's, it's a, a common airplane. Some flight schools use them for training. I've done some training in my airplane. So it's designed for this. It also has inverted systems. It's made to fly upside down. The fuel and oil systems are made to work when the plane's inverted. So again, you can't take your Cessna and roll it over and fly because the engine's going to quit. And plus you're not used to doing that and the airplane's probably just going to fall out of the sky and scare you, quite honestly. And one last thing before we look at the first video. The difference between a torque roll and a tail slide. So I actually have my little briefing stick or airplane model. In a torque roll, we pull the airplane vertical and we roll and we keep it rolling as we go up that upline until engine torque takes over and it starts coming backwards. And at some point we need to flip it over, do it by pulling a little bit of power out and keep flying. It is tail sliding, but it's different maneuver than the straight up tail slide, which is simply flying the airplane up, pull the power out, let the airplane slide back, flip it over by moving the flight controls and fly away. That is a straight, plain vanilla tail slide. The torque roll does use a tail slide at the end of the maneuver, but we specifically call it a torque roll because engine torque is making the airplane roll. And then at the end, we pull some power out as it slides backwards and recovers. So that's the difference between a torque roll and a tail slide. What can go wrong? Well, there are people who do this maneuver and are afraid that the airplane might back up into the ground. Well, you're gonna see very specifically, I'm gonna point it out in the video, the altitudes I'm flying at. At the top of that maneuver, I'm about 2,000 feet. You would be hard pressed to back this thing up 2,000 feet straight into the ground. It only will back up a few plane lengths and then it's gonna to wanna to flip over one way or the other. So it's gonna be hard to back this thing up into the ground. Although some people have an unnatural fear of backing up into the ground in a torque roll. The engine could quit during the maneuver. That's a possibility. You're putting stresses on the plane. You could bust an oil line, things happen. If that happens, you would flip the airplane over and you'll notice this is an air show. I'm right over a runway at a military base. I would simply flip the plane over and land. You gotta think about where you do maneuvers and aerobatics when you're not near some place you can land, like a road or a farm or flat ground. So that's a risk of uh, doing maneuvers like this. By the way, you'll notice I'm wearing a parachute. Parachutes are required by the FAA when you're doing aerobatics. It's a safety measure. Uh, Enough said. If something happens with the airplane, I'm going to try to bail out. All right, enough with the talk for now. I'm going to show you two versions of the torque roll video. First version is from the helmet cam. It's my point of view doing this maneuver, the same one you saw in the opening video. And I'm not going to really talk through this one. I'm going to talk a little bit at the opening. I'm going to freeze it, let you get a kind of a sight picture, as we call it. I'm going to start the video and you're going to watch it all the way through at normal speed from my helmet cam. Then I'm going to come back and talk to you a little bit about what you saw. And then I'm going to set up the second version of the video where I slow it way down, slow-mo. And then I'll be able to talk over the video as the airplane is doing everything and explain exactly what's going on. So here's the video. 
We'll start with the video frozen showing my helmet cam view after turning around with a hammerhead at the end of the airshow box. I just finished the pivot at 1500 feet as you can see on the altimeter highlighted on the upper left side of the instrument panel. The airspeed indicator is right below it. Keep an eye on those as the video starts. That was the first run through at full speed from the helmet cam so you can see what I saw. I'm going to play it again in a few moments here at slow-mo speed. I'm going to talk through it, but I want to point out a few things. You probably noticed when I recovered the maneuver, I pulled the power out. Why did I do that? That propeller is turning. It's a big gyroscope. In fact, on that airplane, it's a 68 pound gyroscope. Gyroscopes do two things. They create precession, which means if you push it here, it moves here. You probably remember that from playing with the little gyroscopes when you were a kid and they create rigidity, gyroscopic rigidity, which means the gyroscope turning is rigid in space. It doesn't want to move. Sometimes when the plane's falling backwards and I want to end the maneuver or I start getting off the vertical, I want to get the nose down and it gets stuck. So if I just pull a little bit of power out, it reduces that torque going into the gyroscope and the gyroscopic rigidity goes way down and I'm able to use the flight controls to get the nose pushed down. So that's the reason for that. And we'll talk about that more during the next video when I'm explaining what I'm doing. But I want to talk about this idea of gyroscopes for a second and how we use that during these maneuvers. There are maneuvers, the torque roll being one of them, where the gyroscope helps us stay straight up because it's spinning, right? So that's how you can get the plane going straight back. That gyroscope is rigid in space. But there are maneuvers like the tumble or the lumpshavak, which I'll do in another video, or the double hammerhead, really exciting and fun where we use the gyroscopic precession capabilities to make the airplane do all kinds of interesting other things. So we play it to our advantage. So all this talk about gyroscopes and, and mechanics and torque, there's a lot of science going on here. And to really get into and understand these maneuvers, you have to be able to science the shit out of this. Okay, let's get into the next uh, part of the video here and we're gonna go through this in detail. The airplane's pointed straight down and accelerating to gain enough smash for the torque roll. I'm flying down and towards center box, teasing the ground with a gentle low G dive. As I hit 190 miles per hour, I ease the stick back into a 5G pull, converting airspeed into altitude and look left at the aerobatic site to set the vertical line. After popping the stick forward to set the line, I push it all the way to the left and squeeze in some right rudder as the plane starts rolling. You can see the full aileron deflection, and notice I'm working the stick forward and aft as needed to keep the plane on the vertical line. As the airspeed approaches zero, you notice the roll rate slows down a bit because there's virtually no airflow over the wings as engine torque is now the driving force keeping the roll going. As the plane reaches the top, I shut off the smoke for style points before it hovers while shuddering from power and torque as the prop wash slipstream tightens up around the fuselage. And the string on the aerobatic site starts to flicker as the plane begins to slide backwards. Once the slide occurs, the string has changed direction. I'll hold it as long as possible. When it's time to recover, I pull out some throttle to allow the nose to drop towards the ground as I shove the stick forward and stomp in full right rudder to prevent the controls from slamming and have a more predictable recovery. Once the nose is dropped, I neutralize the controls, bringing in full power, line up with the show line, then pick up some smash for the next maneuver. I hope you learned something from watching that helmet cam in slow motion and me talking through it and explaining what went on. If you like this video, click the thumbs up like button and please subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting these videos out on about a weekly basis and 
leave your feedback in the comment section. I want to hear what you think. Let's have a conversation about this. That's what I'm here for, just to help explain all these cool air show maneuvers to you. For now, fly safe.